So a funny thing happened over the weekend. Uh, I started my Milo build, and by the end of Sunday, I had pretty much finished it. <laughs> so here is the machine. Um, here is the touchscreen that I talked about in the last video that is uh, being powered from this umbilical uh, from the 5-volt power supply that I added into the table. And if I go here and hit Home All, And I can control travel. Oops. And if I scroll to the spindle control, I have used the on-screen keyboard to put in an RPM, and if I hit active, I've got a spindle. <laughs> so the machine is pretty much up and running uh, I still have to sort out something with the tool setter. I'm not sure that it's registering correctly, so that's something I have to check. But I want to take a little time and go through sort some of the things that I found with the build that uh, might be helpful. The first thing is organize yourself. Uh, there are a ton of different types of fasteners, uh, different screws, roll-in nuts, all kinds of componentry. I bought this Acro Mills bin to help organize me during this build. Uh, once this is all finished, then I'm just going to use that for general fastener organization here in the garage. You certainly don't need to do something like that. You could use the printable parts trays uh, that Steve Builds has on printables. I also used those, they were great. Um, but I wanted something that made it much easier to just be able to pull a certain category of fastener at a time. Uh, when you're doing the Z column, that's just a ton of M5, I believe by eight uh, screws on the side. There's 34 on each side. Um, so organization and being able to grab a lot of fasteners at a time can be handy. Uh, the other thing that I did is I pre-installed all of the heat set inserts in my printed parts. Uh, there are four different sizes of inserts. So just being able to go through and do you know, all the M5s and then all of the longer M3s and then the shorter M3s and then the couple 2.5s for the end stops let me just get that out of the way. And it also helped me kind of familiarize myself with what the parts are. The X and Y assemblies are pretty straightforward. Uh, I did use the alternate raise method of putting them together where you don't remove the carriages from the linear rails. I think that was very helpful in being able to get everything aligned more quickly than if I had removed the carriages and then had to slide the rails back through once they were attached to the XY plate. Uh, one thing that I found was as I did each axis, uh, I also went back and greased the lead screw. So that would be done, um, you know, trying to get under here to grease while it's on the table would be sort of a, <laughs> that'd be a whole thing. So it was much easier to be able to take the X axis, grease that lead screw, work the lead screw back and forth so that the nuts were fully lubricated, clean up any excess, and then be able to move on to the next part of the assembly. Building the Z column is its own challenge. It, it's honestly, in my opinion, one of the more difficult pieces of construction. There are a couple of things that I can point out that will definitely help you during your build. So it can seem a little daunting to figure out how to align the four extrusions that make up the Z column. 
But if you go in order, it's pretty simple. The first is you want to take the extrusion that has the rails and line that to this bottom lip of the FMJ plate. Then the instructions tell you that there should be 18 millimeters of offset between the bottom of this extrusion and the bottom of this extrusion. It should basically be level with that bearing block. Once you have those in place, then it's going to be hard to see because I do have the column in place here. But you can use something, I actually grabbed the one, two, three blocks that came with the kit to lay flat across the second extrusion that then gave me a point of reference to make it parallel with the two extrusions that go here, making this a flat surface for the ballast box and getting everything in place for you to install the 34 M35 roll-in nuts that have to go in there. And speaking of the roll-ins, I would definitely preload the roll-ins for this printed piece that helps manage the uh, Z end stop wires. It was a real pain to try and get roll-ins in there after all of this was in place. I actually wound up grabbing some M5T nuts that I had from another project. So there's that to be uh, aware of. You're also going to need longer fasteners. They're included with the kit, but the screws that hold this Z chain guide in place need to be longer. When it comes to the wiring in the electronics table, cable management is definitely your friend. It's crowded with the number of cables that are in there running through the ducting. So you will definitely want to make sure that's all neat and tidy which will make things easier. You also will probably want to get a jacketed three conductor cable um, to extend or replace the tool setter cable so that you can have the tool setter cable run through the chains along with the X motor harness and just clean that up getting back into the, uh, the table electronics area. Other than that, the, the kit is very well laid out from an electronic standpoint. Uh, all the wiring was really good. Um, it was a fun build. Uh, in some ways, actually easier than my experiences building a Voron because you don't have any belting to deal with. There's no gantry to deal with. Uh, it just three lead screws and a ton of mechanical work. Um, I got very lucky. My VFD was set up out of the box to uh, be remote controlled the way that the flyboard goes. Uh, so I didn't have to do anything there. Some people have had to do some work. Um, again, this is only an issue if you're getting a batch one kit or if you're self-sourcing. Uh, if you're getting a batch two, your kit will come with a VFD and spindle that are already configured to work with the system. So at this point, uh, my to-dos are I have to level the bed, tram the spindle to make sure that it is as perfectly perpendicular as possible to the bed, uh, and sort out that tool setter issue that I think I'm having, which hopefully is just I plugged it in the wrong port. Um, and then the next step for me is to start learning more about CAM so that I can actually take a design, generate G-code and put it on this and make some chips, get my serial and move on. The other big thing is this weekend, I'm going to go get the lumber to start building the workbench. Uh, this is a two foot deep workbench and this machine barely <laughs> fits on it. So I'm building a four by three table for it uh, that will be on casters so that I can move it. I'll definitely show that once I've got it done. Um, and then we're on to enclosure land. And then I really should be able to start using the machine. And hopefully by then I'll have learned what I need to do to generate my files. So let me know if you have any questions, uh, anything that I can point out in specific about the build. Again, the documentation is really good. It is still being improved. I believe LDO has redone the printed parts to clear up some issues. 
Uh, I was using an older set of STLs, so there were some things like the M5 holes on a lot of parts were a little too small, so I wound up using a reamer to clean those out. Um, that's being dealt with. Uh, they've also been redesigned to not use sacrificial layers for recessed screw holes. Um, so there's a lot of improvements there. I didn't see anything that made me want to reprint the parts, but it's still great that moving forward, there'll be a better experience for people. So let me know if you have questions, and next time I will have something else to show you.